the fat controller stood on the platform. On the horizon, a colossal engine emerged from the setting sun. Its black paint was shabby, and its puffs were deep and hoarse. It groaned to a halt, a line of trucks trailing behind. Good evening, greeted the fat controller. You're the replacement goods engine, I presume? That is correct, sir, replied the engine. The regular diesel derailed in the yard. Wasn't keeping a proper lookout, but you know how self-importance gets in the way of some engines, he finished with a wink. Indeed I do, chuckled the fat controller knowingly. What is your name? Dudley, sir. A pleasure to traverse your rails. Very good, Dudley. Please proceed to the shed. You will be in good company with my engines. Thank you for your hospitality, sir. I wish you a pleasant evening. Dudley finished, puffing slowly away. The engines welcomed the newcomer warmly. Soon, they were laughing and chatting like schoolchildren. A pity my stay is but a temporary one, Dudley sighed. You're blessed to have a controller who realizes your value. My days are numbered on the other railway. A grim inevitability, shuddered Gordon. Inevitable, my tender. We could change that, replied James. Oh, I could never impose such a thing, insisted Dudley. Besides, sighed Henry, the fat controllers just purchased Oliver and... Ah, here's our other new acquisition now. Bear backed down next to Dudley. Hello, he smiled. I'm Bear. Lovely to meet you. Mutual, I'm sure, Dudley responded unenthusiastically. Will you be staying long, or... I say, Dudley interrupted, ignoring Bear. Rumor has it one of you recently rescued two failed diesels. That was me, Henry beamed with pride, and began telling the story. Bear was stunned. He gave me the cold buffer too, sighed Boko. Living on the other railway likely hasn't painted us diesels in the best light. Aye, agreed Donald. Didn't take it to heart, Bear. Dougie and I needed time to come round. He'll find you're a good sort. Mm, I hope, Bear conceded, though he couldn't help feeling hurt. It was a pleasure to make your acquaintances... Dudley announced the next morning. If our paths never cross again, I wish you nothing but smooth runnings. With a blast of his whistle, he went to fetch his return train. What a shame, said Henry. I wish there were something we could do. Despite his hurt feelings, Bear tried to be optimistic. He seems a good sort. He smiled. Things always work out in the end for honest, hard-working engines. The others said nothing. They only hoped Bear was right.
With Duck running his branch line, Donald volunteered to shunt in the yard. He did it well, easily keeping the trucks and coaches in line. The others were grateful for his help. That morning, Donald brought the coaches for the first train to the platform. He shunted them into place, then hurried off to prepare a goods train. Before long, Henry came backing down into the station. He was looking forward to a run in the morning sunlight when... Glory! cried his driver. Instead of waiting at the platform, the coaches were fouling the points. Stop! Stop! groaned Henry. His brakes screeched, but it was too late. Henry's tender was derailed, resting crooked against the battered coaches. Their paint was scratched and their windows shattered. Both Henry and the coaches whimpered meekly. Soon, the fat controller arrived. Donald cleared away the unhurt coaches while Dudley brought the cranes. How on earth did this happen? demanded the fat controller. Uh, can I say, sir? replied Donald. Yon coaches were at the platform when I left them. I see. Some defect in the brakes, no doubt. I'm afraid it means a trip to the works for you, Henry. This puts us in an awkward position. I'm sorry, sir, frowned Henry. Excuse me, sir, smiled Dudley. May I offer my assistance? I won't exactly be busy if I return to the other railway. Surely my controller could spare me to make up for Henry's absence. The fat controller smiled. A splendid idea, Dudley. I'll make the arrangements right away. In the meantime, please take Henry to the works. Henry's tender was soon back on the rails. There, there, old boy, comforted Dudley. You'll soon be right as rain, and I'll handle your trains with the utmost care. Henry smiled. But Donald watched Dudley with suspicion. What was he still doing here? He should have left ages ago. Strange. Very strange. Dudley was keen to show his work. He thundered along with Henry's goods trains and even took the flying kipper without complaints. His trains were timely and orderly, for the trucks were too intimidated to attempt trickery. grateful for his help, and he proved to be good company in the shed, for all except one. Had a good run today, Dudley? asked Bear with a smile. Quite, came the grunt of a reply before he turned his attention to the others. Bear was no stranger to harsh treatment from steam engines. 
He knew of the damage done by previous diesels with far less class. Even so, Dudley was a tough nut to crack. Bear was restless that night. He kept thinking of how to prove himself a friendly sort. He glanced at the clock. The flying kipper would be due out soon, but Dudley was fast asleep. Psst, whispered Bear. Dudley! A loud snore was the only reply. Dudley! Bear hissed louder. Oh, great heavens! Uh, no, don't take me! I... Calm down, soothed Bear. It's only me, Dudley scowled. You foolish diesel! You've disturbed my sleep! What do you want? I, I wanted you to wake up, stammered Bear. The, the kipper is due soon. If, if you're too tired, I could... Don't you even suggest it, snapped Dudley. I'm more than capable. Tired indeed. <laughs> when he had steam up, Dudley snorted away. Bear was speechless. The next day, Dudley ambled to the yards. As Donald shunted trucks for his goods for him, he spied a lone fuel tanker in a siding. Why is this one not on the train? Am I not stopping at the refinery today? Aye, yeah, replied Donald. Faulty brakes on this one, though. Needs repairs before you can take it. Ah, understandable. Grateful for your help, Donald, but I'll finish things here. You have other trains to shunt, I'm sure. Aye, said Donald, but say no more, then. My train, my responsibility. Suspicious, Donald silently puffed away. Before long, Bear arrived at the station and found Dudley red-faced in a nearby siding. I say, Bear, he called hoarsely. Are you all right? asked Bear. No, I'm not, Dudley sighed. I'm terribly sorry for my outburst last night. You were only looking out for me. It seems I need you to look out for me again. Could you take my goods train? I'm having steaming troubles. Leave it to me, Bear smiled. Thank you ever so much, Dudley grinned. You are a good engine. You just need to fetch all the fuel tankers from the siding. Feeling much better, Bear ambled off to gather the tankers. He shunted them in the middle of the train and started away with a friendly hoot. Out on the main line, they were going well. Suddenly, Bear felt resistance. Smarten up back there, he growled to the trucks. No tricks today, thank you. The truck's reply was drowned in a horrible screeching. Oh, Bear winced. Whatever is happening? Bear couldn't have known the culprit was the faulty tanker. As they rumbled over the points, it happened. The tanker tipped and tumbled off the rails, bringing other trucks with it. Bear came to a sudden stop, and his driver looked back. Cool, he said. What a mess. We'll need... Fire! Fire! shouted the guard. The fuel tanker was ablaze, and those behind it were soon engulfed. The signaler hurriedly phoned the fire brigade. To Bear, it was ages before the wail of sirens filled the air and the blaze was under control. Later, Dudley arrived with the breakdown gang, an inspector, and the fat controller. It 
didn't take long to pinpoint the problem. The wheels on the fuel tanker completely locked up, said the inspector. I reckon that caused it to derail on the points, and sparks started the blades. Hold on, said a workman. That tanker was on the out-of-use siding earlier. It wasn't to be touched. Bear, rumbled the fat controller. How did this truck become part of your train? I don't know, sir, stuttered Bear, quite shaken by the ordeal. Dudley told me to collect all the tankers. I certainly did not, interrupted Dudley. Why would I? Donald told me that one wasn't to be touched. I would advise, interjected the inspector, you pay closer attention next time you assemble a train. It will take a considerable amount of time to repair this damage. The fat controller nodded gravely in agreement, and he and the inspector strode away. Not enough to lead us to scrap, Dudley muttered darkly. But to accuse me of sabotage, the nerve. He left indignantly. Bear, ashamed and confused, looked solemnly at his buffers. Following his accident, Bear was confined to local passenger bodies. Perhaps a slower pace will remind you to take care, the fat controller sternly advised. Yes, sir, sighed Bear solemnly. Cheer up, lad, smiled Donald. At least being mixed traffic means you can still work. Imagine if you are strictly a goods engine. Bear smiled. But from another corner of the shed, Dudley listened with intent. Strictly a goods engine. Hmm. Gordon was feeling unwell. He struggled valiantly on, not wanting to disappoint the passengers. However, it was clear he needed maintenance. You poor thing, sympathized Dudley. It's most admirable to push yourself to such limits. Certainly wouldn't get that from any diesel. I always longed for a chance at an express run of my own. He gave a heavy sigh. Oh, alas, my class only ever pulled coal trains and other goods. Work is work, mind you, but it would be superb to coast along with coaches. I suppose I'll never get my chance. The other railway certainly wouldn't provide such an opportunity. Lucky you're not on the other railway then, smiled James. Bear and I normally take the express in Gordon's absence, but I'm sure you could have a try. What do you say, Bear? Bear was hoping a good express run would put him back in the fat controller's good graces. However, he feared being painted as a villain if he denied Dudley's wish. I don't see why not, he said with a forced smile. I'm sure you'll manage well. Most kind of you to offer, smiled Dudley. I only hope the fat controller will agree. Indeed, he did. Dudley shared express duties with the others and managed swimming. Then, the weather changed. The sky turned gloomy and gray. Mercifully, the rain was light, 
But one morning, the yard manager brought worrying news. Heavy rainfall is in the forecast today, he advised. A temporary speed restriction will be in place on the main line. So mind yourselves and... Uh, where's Dudley? He's gone to the station, sir, said Bear. The express will be leaving soon. Bother, fussed the yard manager. He needs to know about the restriction. Not to worry, sir, smiled Bear. I'm off to collect my local. I'll give him the message. The yard manager tipped his cap in thanks and walked away. Dudley was sizzling happily when Bear rolled up. There's a speed restriction due to the rain, he advised. You'd best, I'll manage just fine, thank you. Excuse me? I was built for fast services. I didn't survive wartime by crawling along, you know. A little rain won't impede my work. This isn't about your work, huffed Bear. It's about our passengers' safety. Yes, well, given your little maneuver the other day, grinned Dudley, you're hardly qualified to preach about safety. Dudley chortled away, leaving Bear brooding. Wet weather loosens soil on the hillsides along the tracks. This, in turn, creates potential for landslides. Mrs. Kindly had saved Thomas from one many years ago, but the main line wasn't lucky enough to have its own Mrs. Kindly. As such, speed restrictions were enacted to stop engines from crashing into any shifted earth. Dudley didn't care for the speed limit. He thundered along with the express, determined to prove himself. Two big engines down. He chuckled darkly. Now, to get rid of that pesky diesel. If Dudley hadn't been so busy scheming, he might have heard the rumbling of the hillsides ahead. The heavy rain had worked its magic, and the soil was ready for a mad dash towards the rails. The driver was first to notice it. Yikes! he shouted. Dudley broke from his thoughts to see the earth tumbling down the hillside. We'll never stop in time, he cried. More steam, now! The driver threw open the regulator. Dudley's side rods blurred and his wheels pounded the rails. Come on, come on, he shouted. He flew past just in time. The earth clattered down behind the last coach, blocking the line and shaking the rails. They were safe. At the station, the passengers flooded the platform and swarmed around the station master. Your engine is a hero, they shouted. He shot off like a cannonball and saved us. I'll be sure to tell the fat controller, smiled the station master. Dudley smirked. But on his return to the shed, the greeting was far from warm. Speed restrictions are not optional, Dudley. You may be used to fast work, but that's no excuse to gamble with the lives of our passengers. Speed restriction, sir? Dudley replied innocently. I wasn't aware of such a thing. Bear told you at the station, did he not? Asked the yard manager. It was most unfortunate that Bear hadn't returned in time to defend himself. I'm afraid not, sir, lied Dudley. Though I'm not surprised. He's been ever so jealous since I started taking the express. I certainly hope he wasn't planning sabotage. The fat controller looked gravely at Dudley, then back to the yard manager. We shall investigate this he said at last. As you did save the passengers from disaster, I'll forgive this instance of a violation. However, future restrictions are to be followed. Is that clear? Crystal, sir, smiled Dudley. When Bear returned, the sheds were in an uproar. 
Why are you so threatened by Dudley? Gordon demanded. Never thought you'd stoop this low. Henry said you were different from other Diesels, snorted James. But I suppose you deceived him, too. Ah, I didn't, Bear stuttered in disbelief, looking to Dudley to speak the truth. Such a shame, Dudley said in a low voice. I'd certainly hoped you were different. Bear was mortified. He felt helpless and wanted more than anything for Henry to return. Oh, perhaps I don't belong here after all, he sighed and sadly went to sleep. One afternoon, Donald took a supplies train to the works. Henry, awaiting final repairs on his tender, smiled warmly. Hello, Donald. How is everything? Dudley getting on all right? I, I suppose, but I can't say the same for Bear. Donald explained about Bear's mishaps and Dudley's behavior. It doesn't add up, he continued. It's not like Bear to act in such a way. I'm awfully suspicious of Dudley. Henry grew stern. You must tell the Fat Controller at once. I'm all too familiar with this sort of situation. Henry recounted the events of Diesel's stint on the railway. You didn't say, gasped Donald. He even tried to lie about me. We caught him, but only after Duck went to Edward Station. If Dudley's not stopped, Bear could be sent much further away. By the sounds of it, he's already got his coupling hooks in Gordon and James. Donald was pensive. Leave it with me, he said, and hurried back to the shed. When Donald returned, he found Bear all alone staring solemnly at his buffers. Maybe the fat controller shouldn't have kept me, he sighed. Rubbish, retorted Donald. You're an outlier in a world of devilish diesels. I know you didn't have any ulterior motives. Our new pal, on the other hand. You mean, you don't believe Dudley? Bear asked, hopefully. Donald recounted his conversation with Henry and Bear smiled thankfully. And here I thought I was all muddled in the radiator. The question is, how do we prove he's behind all this? I know just the thing, Donald winked. The next day, Dudley was dozing at the shed. Donald was shunting nearby when Bear came excitedly along. I say, Donald, he said loudly, Where'd you put the coaches for the VIP train? Near the station, Donald replied with a grin. They're ready and waiting for you. Excellent, said Bear. I'll be off then. Must be spick and span for our special guest. A special guest, eh? Smirked Dudley. Bear was waiting in a siding for his driver to return pretending to be asleep. He heard the rumble of trucks rolling past, accompanied by deep puffing. When the sound died away, he opened one eye. The trucks sat on the points, blocking him in. Worked like a charm, he chuckled to himself. Meanwhile, Dudley skulked around the sidings by the big station. Special coaches, special coaches, he thought. Where could they be? Over here, came a voice. Dudley perked up and hurried towards it. Into a siding he swerved, and waiting for him was... Hello! grinned Toad. You must be Mr. Dudley. 
You're not a special coach, Dudley growled. I never claimed to be one, sir, Toad replied in his chipper manner. Were you looking for some? There's meant to be a VIP train, snarled Dudley, and I'll be the one to take it. A VIP train? That does sound thrilling. Dudley looked back in amazement. There was Bear. Y you Dudley gritted. How'd you get out of that siding? I helped him, said Donald, who drew alongside. Question is, how'd you know he was trapped? Dudley went pale. I, uh, well, that is to say, I... An excellent question indeed, Donald. I'm most curious to hear the answer. The fat controller stepped out of tow. Well, Dudley, shall we have the truth this time? The engine's bewildered face twisted into a wicked snarl. Yes, it was all my doing. I'm still an engine in his prime. Why should I face the prospect of scrap? Oh yes, we've all heard of the sanctuary that is the Fat Controller's Railway. A haven where steam will always have a place. And yet, Dudley trailed off, glaring at Bear. There still appear to be rats among us. I've proven my worth. Surely you wouldn't send an engine to his end, sir? The fat controller pondered. No, Dudley, he said at last. I wouldn't. Dudley smirked. And I wish you luck in finding a new home. However, it won't be here. You... you can't, Dudley gasped. Deceit has no place on my railway. I welcome any engine, steam or diesel, who shows that they are both useful and honest in their work. I hope you learn to change your ways. Perhaps then you will find what you seek. I politely ask that you leave at once. There was silence. Donald and Bear stood with bated breath. At last, Dudley gave a sinister smirk. <laughs> Perhaps this railway isn't any different after all. You call this deceit? Ho <laughs> ho My dear sir, it is survival! The only thing that matters in the age of scrap. Well, you've won the battle, but not the war. I'll take my leave at your request, but you will remember me. Bear and Donald moved silently away, freeing Dudley from his siding. They puffed crossly backwards. Dudley was soon coupled to a long line of wagons. Bear and Donald watched from the platform as he stormed away with much pushing and huffing. Into the setting sun he puffed and disappeared on the horizon. I do feel some sympathy for him, sighed Bear. Scrap is a prospect no engine wants to face. Do you reckon he'll change? Can he say, replied Donald. But with what he said to the fat controller, it might be too little too late. Bear said no more but couldn't help feeling Donald was right. Life returned to normal on the Fat Controller's Railway. Henry came home from the works and gave Gordon and James quite an earful. 
they shamefully apologized to Bear at once. Bear was a much happier engine after that. He worked hard and always lent a wheel to engines in need. Though still friendly to visitors, he had no reservations about putting snooty diesels in their place. The steam engines agreed that made him very useful indeed. But what of Dudley? No one knows for certain. He seemingly disappeared after leaving the island of Sodor. Perhaps he changed his ways and found a new home. Many diesels on the other railway will tell you that, on misty nights, the hoarse puffing and deep whistle of a steam engine can be heard rumbling through on its way to the Fat Controller's railway. I wonder if the diesels are right.